Formula E is built around batteries. They literally make the cars go faster and for longer. So the better the battery, the better the performance of the car that's using it. We're here with the Renault EDAMS team to try and understand a little bit more about how you can improve on an already pretty good thing. So how do they work? Well, very, very simply, electricity is passed from the enormous battery through the motor, through a drivetrain converted into torque or twisting motion at the rear wheels of the car. But since season two, the rules have opened up and allowed teams to design their own powertrain systems, desperately trying to get the most efficiency through different numbers of motors, different positions of motors, all designed to get the most out of the energy that's stored in that battery. The current Williams battery, which was a world leader back in 2014 when the championships began, actually has 28 kilowatt hours of usable energy. It lasts for around 12 to 17 laps in the race, but crucially, not the entire EPRI, and that is why we have the mid-race car change at the moment. So this battery was really pushing the boundaries of the technology when it was designed for season one of Formula E, but for season five, we've got something brand new coming, haven't we? We will uh, uh, double the uh, energy for similar weight and volume. We will have only a single car for the whole races, still around 45 minutes. And as well, we'll increase the power level from 170 kilowatt at the race condition to 200 kilowatts. So the car will be much faster with a single battery for the race. So it's a major step. The 250 kilowatt discharge speed of the new McLaren battery is something like the equivalent of watching tens of thousands of YouTube videos simultaneously on your phone. And it's a quarter as much power again as the current battery has. But what about the speed that it has to recharge? Because that's critical too. It's part really of electrical vehicle challenge is to make sure we recover as much as possible energy from the braking system for us to optimize our performance. You can optimize your region to make sure that you will have the maximum average power at the release to give the maximum performance for the driver. So how effective is the regen from your point of view when you're sitting in the car? If you look at this particular circuit in Buenos Aires, you're going to end up uh, using 1.5 kilowatt per lap, more or less, because we have 28 kilowatt for the entire race. That's your energy you're expelling when you're driving? Yes, okay. and you will recharge more or less 0 0.35, 40. So you will need more or less four laps to recover the energy you need for one entire lap. Okay. So every four laps, yeah. you gain one lap. So that can really affect your race strategy, can't it? It's obviously very important for us. If you need to go longer, you need to save more or recover more. So you're going to end up a bit slower. And it's very difficult to discipline yourself and say, OK, I'm not going to do it because I'm going to pay the big price later on. Batteries have made huge leaps in energy storage density over the last 150 years, meaning they've got lighter and smaller whilst able to do a whole lot more. You've only got to really look at your mobile phone battery and compare it to one of 30 years ago to prove that. But better can mean a whole lot of different things, so there's compromises involved and lots of different trade-offs when you're designing one of these things. Theo, tell us about the composition of the cells inside these batteries and why they're so important. So we're using lithium-ion cells uh, from Ixult. They are uh, called NMC, so nickel, cobalt and manganese. As you know, it's a fully electric powered vehicle, so you need a high energy density, both in terms of mass and volume. So we have a very limited space available in the single seater. So we do need a cell that store a lot of energy, which is able to deliver a lot of power. So all of these elements bring different things then to the, the composition of the cell and its properties. It must be a trade-off. There are trade-offs between power and energy. And with Formula E, we are right in the middle where you want a powerful car, but still yeah. able to have a reasonable range. So we know the balance of chemistry is really important. The difference between going harder and going longer is created just by the different proportions of a few key elements. And this is really important when we come to the development of road cars. We don't necessarily need them to go fast. We want them to go further and to be more efficient. So it's all about having the right vehicle for the job. The electric Renault Kangoo here has a battery capacity that allow it to drive for around about 106 miles, as opposed to the Formula E car under very different circumstances, of course, where you'll get around 25. And the top speeds are different too, because this thing on the public roads only needs to do around 70 or 80 miles an hour, whereas the Formula E car, a pure racer, will get up to around 150. But it's when it comes to recharging that we really see the big differences 
With an electric road car, it's fine to be able to charge that overnight. So that's how long it takes. With a Formula E car though, the demands are very different and they can charge those up in less than an hour. And so what about the wider world? What about outside of Formula E? Where do you think development is going? So for sure, the, everybody wants more range, more power, and the, the cell suppliers are working on developing manufacturing technique and new chemistry to improve that. You're really looking at improving the density, both in terms of mass density and volumetric density. So, so you're talking about storing more energy yes, for a given weight or size. For a given weight or a given volume. Yeah. Within the past 10 years, we doubled the range of the vehicle, and I think the same is about to come in the next uh, 10, 15 years, no doubt. What's great is that research and development and the learning from right here in Formula E is feeding directly into this battery revolution. Of course, batteries are just a way of storing energy and releasing it as required. Graphene supercapacitors, hydrogen fuel cells are other ways of doing pretty much the same thing, but at the moment, cost, safety and practicality issues are holding those back. So it's the crucial chemistry of batteries which is the biggest area of development and perhaps the single biggest factor helping to drive us forward both here at Formula E and also out there on the roads.